This is the Velatric Discover 2, which is one of the most feature-rich e-bikes we've ever tested in its price range between $1,500 and $2,000. In a lot of ways, I think this is a bike for just about everyone, but what is it about the bike that leads me to say that? Let's take a ride and find out. Welcome back to Electric Bike Report. My name is John. We are known for doing extremely in-depth, real-world testing of every e-bike we get our hands on. So if you're in the market for one, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you have notifications turned on so you can see all of our new reviews. But let's jump into the Discover 2. I'm really excited about what this bike has to offer. This is the first model in Velatrix's second generation of e-bikes, and it is loud and clear that they've made some huge changes. There are just a ton of awesome features and upgrades all over the place on this bike. I wanna focus on the ride experience first. This was just a super comfortable bike to use. The Discover is a commuter e-bike that has a lot in common with cruiser-style bikes. So it has a big, squishy, custom-branded saddle, it has curved Dutch-style ergonomic handlebars with rubber grips, and it has an upright riding position that just felt really natural and relaxing. It also had fantastic handling. The Discover 2 weighs 70 pounds, so it's not a light bike, but it felt really stable, and its steering was surprisingly responsive. Those things were kind of a combined effort between the 27 and inch by 2.4 inch Kenda street tires and the wide handlebars that are either 680 millimeters or 700 millimeters, depending on the frame size. On top of that, this bike's level of customization really makes it stand out from the crowd. We've seen plenty of bikes that allow you to tweak and tune their settings, but very few go this far. The Discover 2 has three riding modes, which are eco, trail, and boost. So those are broad, low, medium, and high ranges, and each of those have five pedal assist settings that break down the power levels further. The bike ships as a class two with throttle and pedal assist up to 20 miles per hour, but you can set the pedal speed limit anywhere between 12 and 28 miles per hour. You can choose whether the throttle speed is tied to the limits of each pedal assist setting, and you can even customize the behavior of the brake light. I could go on, but I don't want to take up too much time in this section of the review, so I'll circle back to those things in the ride quality section a little bit later on. To keep things moving, let's run through the rest of the bike's spec sheet. It features a 750 watt rear hub motor, which is the VeloPower E75 Plus, and that's made by Velatric. The motor has a peak output of 1100 watts and 75 newton meters of torque, and it uses a torque sensor to engage. There's a removable 48 volt, 706 watt hour battery in the down tube made with Samsung cells, and that carries UL2271 certification and an IPX7 rating for extreme water resistance. The bike has an eight speed Shimano Altus drivetrain with a 46 tooth chain ring and an 11 to 32 tooth cassette. It has Tektro E3520 hydraulic disc brakes with two piston calipers and 180 millimeter rotors. There's a suspension fork up front from a YDH with a lockout and 80 millimeters of travel to help smooth out the ride. And then up in the cockpit, the bike has a color LCD with color-coded pedal assist settings. There's a rapid fire shifter on the right handlebar next to a bell. And then on the left, there's a throttle lever and the control panel. We have a couple of optional accessories on our test bike, like the side mirror and a hitch mount for a trailer, but the bike comes standard with full coverage alloy fenders on both wheels, as well as an MIK HD cargo rack with a whopping 66 pounds of carrying capacity. There's also a headlight, a tail light, and turn signals. And then to wrap things up, the Discover 2 comes in four colors. This is cherry crimson, but there's also mint, stone gray, and pine green. The entire bike is UL2849 certified for safety, and then it has a total payload capacity of 440 pounds, which I don't know if we've ever seen on a commuter of this size and style. That covers all the basics, so let's find out what happened when we tested the bike's real-world performance. 
So first up is our brake test. We measured the distance the Discover 2 took to stop after getting up to 20 miles per hour, and then we repeated the process two more times so we could get an average. So with that Tektro hydraulic brake system, the bike's average stopping distance was 21 feet 2 inches. Our running average for all of the commuter e-bikes we've tested is currently 21 feet 10 inches, so the Discover was a little better than average, and that's definitely what we like to see. This brake system is a new version of the E350 hydraulic system that we've tested on a ton of different bikes. I didn't really notice any difference in the way these felt when I was testing the bike, but they stopped the bike effectively every time. The Discover 2 fishtailed a little bit when I was really laying into the brakes, but that wasn't really anything unexpected. So bottom line, these brakes were solid and Velatrix seems to have specced the bike very well. In our speed test, I took the Discover 2 out to our local bike paths to see how fast it could go in each pedal assist setting. We didn't want to get too crazy with this test since there are technically 15 pedal assist settings and the bike speed limit can also be changed. So I stuck with the middle power level, which is trail mode, and I did one test with a 20 mile per hour limit and another with a 28 mile per hour limit. Let's see how those tests went and then we'll check out the acceleration from the throttle. All right, let's do a class two speed test here on the Velatric Discover 2. Starting off with no pedal assist and I'm going around 11 and a half miles per hour or so. Let's go ahead and bump up to PAS 1. So motor kicked on, it's very quiet. It's also pretty subtle here, uh, not getting a lot of power, but there is definitely a difference in pedal ability um, and speed. So we're going kind of around 13 and a half, 14 miles per hour here. But the bike feels, you know, about the same. Let's go ahead and go up to PAS2. And not a big change in feel. Getting a little bit more speed though. So going around 14 and a half, I'd say. Let's go ahead and go up to PAS3. All right, picking up in speed for sure. Shift it up to fifth gear. Uh, you know, the pedal experience is still pretty much the same, but I am going a lot faster. So got about 16 and a half miles per hour here, up towards 17, yep. Well, maybe up towards 17 and a half. All right, let's go up to PAS4, and then I'm gonna shift up again. All right. So we hit that 20 mile per hour limit for the class two mode here, a little, a little above actually. Getting up toward 21. And then let's finish things off in PAS5. And I don't really expect any difference here just since we are kind of at that limit. You can see we fell a little bit below 20 and then the motor kind of kicked back in. And yeah, we we're staying in that range of, you know, 20 and a half or so being about the max. So, all right, let's call that our class two test and we'll do a class three test. All right, we're back for a class three speed test. Uh, so I'm starting off here, dialing in my level of effort around that same 11 and a half mile per hour mark. Let's go ahead and go up to PAS1 then. And I'm gonna shift up a gear. So again, you know, pretty smooth engagement there. A little, a little bit of power in this setting. Nothing too crazy, but feels very natural. And it's making a little bit of a difference. So we're up toward 14 and a half miles per hour. Maybe 14 is a little more realistic. All right. Let's go up to PAS2. And again, feeling very similar in this setting. Uh, very natural feel, not much difference in speed. Shifting up though. So going around 15 and a half now. All right, let's go up to PAS3. And picking up in speed for sure seems to be maybe more of a difference here like picking up pretty quick actually 
Yeah, we're actually getting up toward the class two limit of 20 miles per hour. But then of course we have a lot of room above that. Yep, all right, so it's like about 20 and a half in this setting. Let's go up to PAS4. All right, pedaling is definitely a lot different, like a, a lot easier now. Not applying, you know, as much uh, effort, or at least it's not, you know, requiring as much from my muscles, I guess. So we're going around 23 miles per hour here. All right, and then let's finish things off in PAS5. And now I'm gonna shift up to eighth gear. Wow, okay. Big difference there. This thing's cruising now. Yeah, not really taking a lot of work to stay up here around that 28 mile per hour limit. And you can see that we are reaching that. So we'll call that our class three speed test. All right, let's do a throttle acceleration test on the Discover 2 and see how fast it goes from zero to 20. So let's start in three, two, one, go. So it took a, took a second to pick up there, but we're building pretty steadily now. 17, 18, 19. And let's see if we can get up to 20. Yeah, 19.9, 20, there we go, okay. A couple of quick caveats about those tests. First, your results might be different than ours since this bike has a torque sensor that allows the motor to match your level of effort. But also the bike behaves differently in each riding mode with eco mode having less power and slower acceleration and boost mode having more power and quicker acceleration. And we chose trail since it was sort of the middle of the road. To recap my results, I hit 11.8 miles per hour pretty easily with no pedal assist. In class two mode, my top speeds were 13.7 miles per hour in PAS1, 14.6 in PAS2, 17.2 in PAS3, 21 miles per hour in PAS4, and 20.3 in PAS5. With the bike's max speed set to 28 miles per hour, it was faster across the board. I measured 14.9 miles per hour in PAS1, 15.6 in PAS2, 20.6 in PAS3, 23 miles per hour in PAS4, and 28.3 miles per hour in PAS5. Generally speaking, I think the Discover's feel was a bit smoother than those results suggest when you're looking at the graphs, but there were a couple of anomalies that stood out. PAS1 and 2 felt pretty similar in both tests, so there wasn't much of a power difference between them. And then in the class two test with the 20 mile per hour limit, PAS four and five both hit that limit, but then there was a massive swing in speed between those in the class three test. I think some of those things can be attributed to the bike's programming and others are a result of its torque sensor. I'd have probably gotten more used to it with time, but I noticed that I had to really focus a lot on my pedaling in order to get consistent output from the motor, so it wasn't quite as intuitive and responsive as I'd have liked, but I do think it was a big step up from a cadence sensor. I also noticed that the motor seemed to stick to the low to middle range of its full output most of the time, so it could feel really natural like a non-electric bike, but it also did have quite a bit of power if I worked for it. With the max speed opened up to 28 miles per hour and the bike set to boost mode, this thing felt super fast. So I think there's a wide enough range of speed and power levels to satisfy just about everyone, no matter if you want a good workout or you don't want to break a sweat at all. To wrap things up, I liked that the throttle could be tied to the pedal assist set system. Excuse me. I expected a little faster acceleration when starting up with the throttle, but I also think the bike's gradually building speed will give it a bump in mass appeal. In our range test, we pedaled the Discover 2 in both a low and high power setting with a 20 mile per hour speed limit until its battery was fully drained. We tested it in boost mode and PAS5 for the high power test and trail mode and PAS1 for the low power test as we think most riders will want a bit more than eco mode can provide. The bike did an awesome job though. We recorded 34.1 miles and 85.6 miles in our tests. So we were able to beat Velatrix advertised 80 mile range. 
Compared to other commuter style e-bikes we've tested, the Discover's max assist range was a little above average, but its low power test was way above and beyond. It's one of the furthest results we've seen from any commuter with a rear hub motor. I think there are two main reasons for that. First, I mentioned earlier how the bike seemed to stick to a low to moderate level of power output most of the time, and that definitely helped to increase its efficiency. But the torque sensor is another thing that boosted the bike's range. If we look at the Discover 1, that bike had a higher battery capacity to motor power ratio, as well as a cadence sensor, but we saw over 30 miles of additional time on the Discover 2 with less than a mile per hour difference in average speed. So with 80 plus miles of potential range, it's pretty likely that you'll have a few round trips to work or school covered, even if you have a longer commute. And even if you do need to recharge, the bike includes a three amp fast charger, so it only takes about five hours to fill up. Do keep in mind that if you're riding in boost mode and PAS5 with a 28 mile per hour speed limit, you'll probably get less range than we did, but that's totally normal. Overall, I think the Discover 2 did a fantastic job and I give it a solid two thumbs up. Our tester, Justin, performed our hill test with the Discover 2 at a spot called Hellhole Trail. This path is a third of a mile long, it's paved, and it has an average grade of 12%. Justin tested the throttle and the pedal assist system in PAS5, and once again we did this test in trail mode to find a middle ground with the understanding that if the bike could finish the test there, it would only get better in boost mode. So let's go find out how it did. Okay, out on Hellhole with the Velifric and doing the throttle test. So we'll see how this does. Right off the bat, we're kind of down to about 12, 11. Feels pretty decent. We'll see how it does through this next section. It's always one of the more challenging sections. Down to nine, eight, seven. And it seems to be holding around that seven, seven and a half. Oh just below six there so yeah got down to about six and a half at the low point through that first steep section motor i would say is about average for those for a rear hub motor um i'll be quiet through this next section so you can you can listen to it i apologize for the wind noise out here today So it didn't gain a ton of speed between these two sections. Ended up dropping down to about 5.6, 5.7 on the low end, but it's gonna make it up. Um, so yeah, as you, can, as you can tell, you can hear the motor a little bit. It's definitely not bad by any means, and I kind of pin it right about average, just my gut reaction. Um, it's not gonna be a hill charger on throttle, which for this style of kind of laid back commuter, I don't have a problem with uh, most people kind of get these because they want to pedal it a little bit anyways. So we'll see as we get to the top, we'll go to the tape and, and see how it did. Okay, back at it with the Velotric Discovery 2, now on the pedal test. Um, and again, on these tests, I don't push it. I kind of try to let the bike do it with the rear hub motors. Um, and so far we're down to about nine miles an hour. Shifts fairly well. Down to seven, six. So I, I'm on the high PS level. And, you know, I will say from a power output standpoint, I think it's gonna be a little bit slower than maybe some of the average, um, which is not uncommon on this more laid back cruiser style rear hub motor e-bikes. The motor has been really pretty quiet. I'll let you listen to that through this next section here. Yeah, so when you're kind of climbing and going a little bit slower, you can barely hear that motor. Go down to about 5.6 miles an hour. And I happen to push just a little bit more, maybe than average. Um, 
nothing like riding a road bike up it. <laughs> I did that two weeks ago and it took me three and a half minutes. So even though the results probably aren't gonna be like, you know, it's not rocketing up this hill, just keep that in mind. It'll still beat that by probably a minute. So yeah, we'll see what it ends up at. Definitely climb hill hole. I think with this one, you might end up using a little bit of throttle and pedal, but overall not too bad. And the motor again, really nice and quiet. So let's go to the tape and check the results. Okay, so Justin finished the throttle test in one minute and 44 seconds with an average speed of 10.4 miles per hour. His pedal test was a bit slower. It took two minutes and six seconds to get to the top and his average speed there was 8.6 miles per hour. So the bike's throttle results is a little above average when compared to similar bikes we've tested, but that pedal result was definitely on the slow side. That made sense to me considering the programming I talked about earlier, especially since we were in the mid-level riding mode. But for a more apples to apples comparison, I tested the bike at our secondary test location in PAS5 in each of the three riding modes to get a sense of their different power levels. My data from those tests showed that trail mode was over 25% faster than eco mode and boost mode was almost 29% faster than trail. So with that data, I took our results from Hellhole and did some math. In theory, we should have been able to make the climb in boost mode in 1 minute and 38 seconds with a speed of about 11.1 .1 miles per hour, which is still slower than average for a commuter with a rear hub motor, but significantly faster than the trail mode results. The bottom line is that the Discover 2 has what it takes to handle steep hills, both with the throttle and with the pedal assist system. Based on my experience, I'd recommend eco mode for anyone who wants a good workout, Trail for those who want a natural feel, but an easier experience. And then boost if you're looking for a pretty relaxed ride. There's still a lot to talk about when it comes to the Discover 2's ride quality. So let's go talk about a few of the major elements and then we can come back and go a little bit deeper back here in the studio. All right, so let's talk ride quality on the Velatric Discover 2. First thing I'm gonna do here is actually put it in cruise control mode. So let me get up around 16, and then I'm gonna hold this bottom button on the control panel. Yep, there we go, that little icon came up. So now the bike's doing all the work. So this is a sort of hybrid commuter slash cruiser e-bike, and it has some Dutch influence. So there's a nice upright riding position and then you have these wide swept back cruiser style handlebars that are very ergonomic. Uh, there are two frame sizes for the bike, a regular and a large. We're on the regular right now, which I'm technically a little bit too tall for. And I do feel that, but uh, just based on how this one fits and how much adjustability there is, I would expect that the large would be perfect. Uh, so you have a nice long seat post to change your saddle height and then there's an adjustable stem so as long as you have allen wrenches you can uh, loosen that up and change the angle and adjust your handlebar height and your reach there and really dial in that fit so in terms of ride comfort uh, there's a suspension fork up front with 80 millimeters of travel and I'd say that that definitely does some of the work, but then you also have some nice wide tires and a thick saddle and those both help to, you know, soften things up, absorb some bumps and vibrations as well. So the tires are 27 and a half inch by 2.4 inch. They're made by Kenda. And, um, you know, in addition to being a little bit more comfortable and a little squishier, they are wide enough that you feel really stable on this bike, or at least I do. Uh, and then let's talk about the motor. That is a proprietary motor from Velatric. It's a 750 watt rear hub. And I guess I'll deactivate the uh, cruise control now and we'll, we'll pedal for a little bit. So I'd say that um, most of the time, uh, just with a torque sensor here, the bike feels pretty natural. Uh, but then in order to sort of access more power on the bike, um, the sensitivity is, is a little bit different. You kind of have to keep your pressure consistent throughout your whole pedal stroke uh, to really get the higher motor output. But you know, in general, if you're looking for a 
uh, natural feeling ride. This will check the box for you. And you also have three riding modes, each of those with five pedal assist settings. So a total of 15 power levels on the bike that you can choose from and a lot of other customization and a lot of cool other features that we'll talk about back at the studio. Wow, windy day. All right, we'll uh, bounce back to the studio. So that cruise control feature was super cool and just one of the little things that really added to the overall experience. I already discussed the bike's comfort and handling, but I do want to reiterate that those were really huge components of the ride quality as well. I've got to give a lot of credit to the adjustable stem. It was really nice to be able to dial in the fit as much as I could since I was a little above the height range for this regular frame, which is 4 foot 11 to 5 foot 9. The large size, which would have likely been a better fit, is made for riders between 5 foot 6 and 6 foot 4. I've talked a bit about the bike's torque sensor, but I want to try to describe that a bit more. I've tested quite a few bikes with torque sensors that responded with a lot of power to fairly small changes in pedaling, but in order to get the full force of the Discover 2's motor, I had to really concentrate and keep a very consistent level of pressure on the pedals throughout their full rotation. It was definitely less of an issue when I was riding faster in the higher power settings, but I'd encourage Velatric to use a more responsive sensor in the future to make the experience a bit more intuitive. With that out of the way, I want to point out a bunch of cool little features and techie things that stood out. First, I'm always extremely happy about seeing turn signals on a commuter. And as with some of Velatrix's other e-bikes, the Discover 2 is compatible with Apple Find My, so you have a good chance of locating your bike if anything happens to it while you're grabbing a cup of coffee. And the MIK rack is worth pointing out, so there are a whole bunch of storage baskets and bags that are compatible with this system, and with the 66 pound weight limit, it's even compatible with a child seat. So bottom line, there's a ton of cool stuff with this bike that should really open it up to a ton of different types of riders, and I think it brings a lot to the table for its price tag of around 1700 bucks. I spent quite a few hours on the Discover 2 during my personal testing of the bike, and I couldn't help but think of it as the Toyota Camry of e-bikes. It's just a good all-around bike, it has a ton of features, it's family-friendly, it puts a big focus on safety, and it's great for getting to work, running errands, or just for getting some exercise and fresh air. This bike offers so much customization that you can really make it your own, and it's flexible enough that it could be a great bike for grandma just as easily as your crazy uncle who likes to live life on the edge. The level of customization might not be for everyone if you prefer a simple hop on and go kind of bike, but I appreciate the direction Velatric took, and it definitely made the Discover 2 stand out. Overall, I think this bike shows a massive step forward for the brand, and I'm really excited to see where the company goes next. I'd like to see them dial in the torque sensor a little better, but I'm totally blown away by how much they packed into this bike. It performed well across the board with its best performance in our range test, and on top of everything else, I think it just looks cool. That glossy paint job is sweet. If you want to take a closer look at the bike or check out our written review, we'll leave links to Velatrix's website and electricbikereport.com down in the video description. Please make sure to use our affiliate link if you make a purchase, as it helps us to keep making high quality content. And please let us know what you think down in the comments section. Be sure to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for more awesome e-bike reviews. Thanks for watching. Again, I'm John with Electric Bike Report, and this is the Velatric Discover 2.